Hi, I'm Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. And in this video, we're going to talk about stoichiometry and uh, work an example problem and talk through some of the thoughts about how to figure out how much product you can form um, given information such as a limiting reactant. Um, so we're going to work the problem that's, that you can see right over here. Um, I'm going to try to explain all the thought processes behind all the steps that I do uh, in said problem. So here we go. So uh, it's the problem is telling us that uh, it's looking for a mass of oxygen that's required to prepare 200 grams of uh, this tetraphosphate decaoxide from elemental phosphorus. So the first thing we should probably do here is um, we should probably write a balanced equation. Um, and to write a balanced equation, we need to have a chemical equation to begin with. So it is, the question here is telling us that we're going to prepare this material. So that's going to be on my product side. So this uh, tetraphosphate decaoxide is going to be over here. Um, I'm going to be forming this. It's my product. Now, I know my reactants from the question are elemental phosphorus. Elemental phosphorus, um, we then have to know how much phosphorus we're actually going to be, uh, or I'm sorry, what form of phosphorus we're going to be dealing with. <clears throat> Plus the oxygen that we've got. Now, oxygen here is going to be in the form of molecular oxygen. The reason it's going to be a molecular oxygen is because of all the reasons we've talked about previously. We've got oxygen in its natural form, which is molecular oxygen. We could go ahead and we could put in our phases if we wanted to right now um, because the nature of this problem is such that it doesn't really matter. Um, because we know that this is a reaction in which we're going to be creating um, products and it's a straight synthesis reaction, we don't really need to worry about those phases. But we can go ahead and we can do a little bit of balancing here. So we can just right off the bat see like, okay, there's four phosphorus that were over here in our uh, product. So we need at least four phosphorus over here. For our oxygen, we've got 10. The only way to get to 10 is five as our stoichiometric coefficient. Now, a thing that I wanna point out is uh, elements like this phosphorus right here they in nature will sometimes have different combinations. Um, and so because it, phosphorus is a nonmetal, we're going to have various molecular forms of phosphorus. Um, so sometimes for some forms of phosphorus, it might just be individual phosphorus atoms. Most of the time it's really not going to be. It might be uh, like something phosphorus 4 or phosphorus 8 or something along those lines the end of the day here, it really isn't a big deal for us to know that, the which exact form of phosphorus, because this question is asking us about the oxygen. So if we know what our ratio is of oxygen in our product, and we know how much oxygen we're going to need from there, we're going to be in pretty good shape. So what we've got written out here for our phosphorus is going to be all right for this problem. We'll do other examples, uh, and you'll see other examples in your homework where that would be different. But for right now, everything's still cool. The key is we know what the um, stoichiometric coefficient is in front of our oxygen, and we know what its ratio, the, the amount of oxygen we need for every one phosphor, tetraphosphorus decoxide, 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 I don't know. So 
what this is, another way for us to write out this five to one thing is to say for every five moles of oxygen, we have one mole of our product that can be generated. Because we can write this out as a ratio, we can then write it out as a fraction. We can say five moles of oxygen over one mole of the phosphorus tetroxide, which I did not write correctly, which we will fix. There we go. Or we could write it out with the phosphorus species in the numerator and the oxygen in the denominator. It doesn't matter because this is a ratio. That's the beauty of the stoichiometric coefficients. As long as we keep them with our species, we're going to be in pretty good shape. All right. We are given as part of this problem that we're trying to prepare 200 grams of our product. Anytime we do a stoichiometry problem, in order to use our stoichiometric coefficients, we have to have our units in moles or in molecules. Excuse me. There's no good reason to go all the way from grams to atoms or to molecules, though, because the conversion factor between mole to moles or mole to particles, generic, is always going to be Avogadro's number. So we can really relate everything moles to moles if we see fit. And we should. It's gonna save us a couple it's gonna save us some time. So our plan of attack, if that if you would call it that, would be take what we've got in grams. Since we can't figure out how many grams of oxygen we need directly from the grams of our product, we have to do mole to mole ratio. We need to figure out the amount of our product we have in moles. Once we have it in moles, we can then compare the moles to moles. You can always compare moles to moles. That's totally fine. And once we've got in moles of oxygen, we can get it into grams of oxygen. For every single one of these arrows, there's going to be a conversion factor. So right here, right here, and right here, we're going to be using a conversion factor. Like we've been talking about for a while, we're always going to use our molar mass to get us from grams to moles or moles to grams. So this first one that we need is going to be the molar mass of our product. This second one then here, right here, this thing, this is where we're going to use our stoichiometry. Our final one is a moles to grams relationship. So yes, we're going to use that molar mass again. So now that we've got this roadmap listed out, now we can actually go ahead and start using our dimensional analysis along with the things that we know. Again, going back up here to our, um, going back up here to our original ratio, the oxygen to the phosphorus product, we can go back and forth either way we want. We can do any kind of relationship or any kind of conversion between any of our reactants, so reactant to reactant, product to product, reactant to product, product to reactant, doesn't matter as long as we've got that proper stoichiometric relationship here, which we spent that time at the beginning getting set up. So now it's time. And let's scroll this down so we can see a little bit better. So we're going to start with what we know, and we know we want 200 grams of our phosphorus material. Now I want to go ahead and do like list out right here. This G is not gas. That's grams. Okay. 
I know it's confusing because we reuse the same uh, letters all the time. Just wait until we start talking about V. Promise. It gets even more fun. So right now, start with what we know. We know our mass of our phosphorus product we want at the end. Time to use our molar mass. So we can go to our periodic table, we can calculate what our molar mass is, and it's gonna be 284 grams, and you're gonna to want to write out specifically grams of your tetraphosphorus decoxide for every one mole of your tetraphosphorus decoxide. So that's the second thing here. Now, if we stopped, we'd be in units of moles, but we're not done. Our roadmap that we created for ourselves said it's now time to use our stoichiometry. Our stoichiometry was such that, we're gonna go back up over here, we're gonna use one of our ratios that we wrote out here earlier that's now in this purple faint pink, I don't know. We're gonna use one of those. We wanna use the one that's going to cancel out the moles of the tetraphosphorus decoxide. So that means one mole of product over five mole of oxygen. And that's coming from, yes, it's coming from our stoichiometry. So now if we stopped, we'd be in moles of oxygen. But the product didn't ask us for moles of oxygen. The product, the problem asked us for grams of oxygen. So this is where we're gonna use our final conversion factor. So for every one mole of oxygen, we're gonna have 32 grams of oxygen. We can go in and we can start canceling out things that cancel grams of our product cancel, the moles of our product would cancel, moles of oxygen cancel, and we're left with then grams of oxygen. So this is very much the dimensional analysis that we practiced in chapter one. We are just now layering on the, the ability to write out chemical formulas, and we're layering on the ability for you to do a balanced equation. And then calculate molar mass. So this is the culmination of all the stuff that we've studied up to this point. We can type this all in our calculator and we should get something around 113 grams of oxygen. Like I said earlier, we can go forward, backwards, any which way, shape or form. Um, using, let me get my head out of the way here. Didn't see I was cutting that off. We can, as long as we have a balanced equation, we can use our stoichiometric relationships to convert from one thing to another. We just have to remember, we got to have that balanced equation. We got to have our molar masses because we have to do our conversion, our stoichiometric conversions in moles to moles. We have to relate mole of thing to mole of other thing. We cannot use gram of thing to relate to gram of other thing. So any possible way for us to get to moles totally counts. Another way that's really popular to get to moles is to use molar mass, or I'm sorry, is to use molarity. Because molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. So a lot of times what you'll see in molarity kinds of problems to figure this out will be something along the lines of uh, an equation or a balanced equation like we had written above, but instead of giving you a mass of your material that you're starting with, they might say something like 0 0.053 liters of solution, whatever and a molarity of 
of like let's say 6.32 molar or they'll, they won't say with molarity they'll say with concentration with concentration of and from this you can also figure out moles because that definition that we had up here is the key if you know you have 0 0.053 liters of your solution if you multiply that by your molarity so 6.32 mole of solute in this case just generic solute because this is a very generic problem for one liter of solution if we do a little bit of canceling boom boom look what you're left with moles of solute and since we're in moles if we go back up to our in like pink road map here once you're in moles you can do what we have here in the middle you can take whatever species that you've got in that solution your solute and using your stoichiometric coefficient you can convert it to anything else that would be possible within the reaction and once you've got your other species in moles you're in really good shape to then convert it as appropriate for however the problem asks you to so the whole gist of this is can you remember go from thing be it mass be it volume be it particles get to moles go from mass to moles using your molar mass usually get from volume to moles using your molarity get from particles to moles using Avogadro's number and once you have moles you can go to moles of other thing so we could say this is moles A moles B using stoichiometry and once you're in B you can go into whatever thing else you want be it mass be it volume be it particles you're just particles how in the how do you spell particles come on let's put a t there part equals there we go Woo! nailed it you're just doing the reverse of what you did at the beginning to get back out at the other end so in some regards this is just kind of an inversion with the pivot point of the whole thing being your stoichiometry i hope that video helped uh, please let me know if you have any additional questions and thank you very much for watching see you in the next one